hope y'all are having a great day and today I'll be reviewing, well more like discussing, Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined by Stephanie Meyer. So for those who don't know, Life and Death is bonus content Stephanie Meyer specifically created for the 10th anniversary of Twilight. So it's kind of like two books in one where you have Twilight and then you get to a certain point and then you flip it over and then it says please turn the book over to read. So you had it this way but then you turn it over this way and you begin to read Life and Death but enough of like the mechanics of the physical book. Okay, so the Goodreads rating for Life and Death is not especially good and admittedly I rated this book two stars on Goodreads because I rated it based on my enjoyment of the reading experience. But my rating doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't appreciate this book. I think my personal issues with a lot of the reviews that I've seen is that they're judging this book based on standards it really doesn't deserve. This is bonus content. It is clearly not an individual standalone novel that can be judged as its own book. Because it's not. It's not its own book, as you can really easily tell by the fact that it's literally packaged as one book. So when I see these reviews that are expecting life and death to be something way grander than it actually is, I get really defensive for Stephanie. She didn't write this to tackle every gender issue in the world or to properly assess problems with gender inequality. It's literally just something extra that she whipped up really quickly because she wanted to stick it into the 10th anniversary edition of Twilight. If this were a proper novel and not just Twilight with the names changed, then yeah, it would be fair to judge this book as some other people have been judging it. But to expect this novel-like expectation of sophistication from fun bonus content is unfair in my opinion. But anyway, enough of that. Let's get into my thoughts. Also, I think I'm going to sit down. Okay, so I freaked out like crazy when I found out about this book. It's just insane. Stephanie hasn't touched the Twilight world in so long, so to have her do something this big for the 10th anniversary of Twilight was just so crazy. I was so excited. I love the Twilight saga. It is my childhood, and honestly, I kid you not, Twilight is my most reread book. I have not reread a single book in the universe more than I have reread Twilight. I've reread Twilight countless times, so I was so pumped for Life and Death. I ordered it the day it came out, and then I got it two days later because of Amazon Prime. So I got it on a Thursday, and I finished it on Saturday night. And I have very mixed feelings about it. I didn't really like it. I didn't think Bo was a convincing enough character. Every time I would pick this book up, I would read it as if it were Bella. And I literally did that with all of the characters. I would translate all the new names back into the old Twilight names unconsciously in my head. Except for Edith, whom I thought was a remarkably convincing character. Speaking of names though, I just can't get over the name Bo. And then Beaufort? Beaufort? It just never really gelled with me. The name Edith and the way it's spelled, I eventually learned to accept. But I don't know, Bo just like didn't work for me. And Archie instead of Alice, that was a no. And Royal instead of Rosalie, that was the worst one. I just, I couldn't get past that. That one was bad. But moving past the names, like I said, I didn't find Bo very convincing. I don't think the narration sounded boyish enough. For the most part, Stephanie kept the inner monologues between Twilight and Life and Death pretty similar, and I feel like you can't keep something that big similar and expect it to sound like different genders. It just still felt like Bella to me, and even when I would tell myself, like, yo, you're reading from Bo's point of view, not Bella's, I'd be like, nah fam, this is Bella. Although to give Stephanie credit where it's due, Bo's dialogue is distinctly different from Bella's at certain parts, and he definitely has a looser sense of humor than Bella does. I just thought my reading experience was really uncomfortable, and it's difficult to explain why. It was just weird having the dialogue and everything essentially stay the same, but having to believe that the characters were different genders. And like I said, I've read Twilight so many times, so it was extremely difficult for me to disassociate all these words and actions from their original characters and attribute them to these new characters. As I mentioned before, I would unintentionally translate all the new characters' names back to the old characters' names. And to counter that, I would always have to constantly remind myself that they were different genders. It was just hard. It was hard to accept and it was hard to think about while I was reading. It was difficult. I just don't think it really worked for me. In the foreword of this book, Stephanie mentions why she decided to do a gender swap. She did it because it was fast and easy and she didn't have a lot of time and also because ever since Twilight was released, Bella has always been under attack because she's such a damsel in distress and because she has this obsessive love for Edward. And so another reason why Stephanie wanted to do a gender swap was to show that Bella's situation wasn't strictly applicable only to females. She wanted to prove that this damsel in distress archetype isn't 
exclusive to girls, and that Bella is not a damsel in distress, but a human in distress, meaning that even if she were a boy, that wouldn't affect the way the story turned out. Stephanie also talks about how obsessive love isn't a strictly female thing to experience. The moments that Beau felt most like a boy to me were actually the parts where he was obsessed with Edith. I thought that felt pretty reasonable and convincing, just like it did when Bella was obsessed with Edward. So I love the fact that Stephanie included her purpose in that foreword. I don't know how well she pulled off her goal, but I love that she explicitly acknowledged what she wanted to do. The fact that she's even attempting to prove that kind of point shows that at least she tried. At least she tried to attain this noble goal, even if her gender commentary and this outcome didn't necessarily appease everybody. Stephanie did change some scenes around because Bella is indeed a boy, and I'm sure you could go into this bonus content and analyze each of the changes she made and try to attack her for what her changes seem to indicate, but I don't want to be mad at her for something she created without serious intentions. I'm not going to blame her for not using this book as a platform to properly dissect all these different kinds of gender roles or whatever because life and death is something that she did really quickly just because she wanted to give her fans something more than a lame letter. Stephanie did something that she thought was really fun and you can tell, you can tell that when you're reading that she had such a blast writing this version. It's so apparent that she had a lot of fun and when I ignored how little I was convinced of the new genders, I also had fun. I'm sure you can sense my defensive streak coming out but honestly, to expect this quickly created bonus content to be some grand masterpiece on the unfair implications of gender and gender stereotypes is to seriously misdiagnose what this story actually is. Again, if this were a real novel, published separately, completely written from scratch with the proper effort and time that is normally allocated for actual novels, then yes, I could see validation in those kinds of attacks. But I don't want us to forget the purpose of this story and the fact that it's just bonus content. Moving on, in addition to the changes made because of gender, there are also some plot changes that are pretty significant, but I feel like to tell you where those plot changes are is to spoil the book. Anyway, although I didn't really enjoy reading this, and although I preferred Twilight a million times over, I still very much appreciate it, and I would love to thank Stephanie for doing this for her fans. I'm glad she had fun, and I'm glad that we as fans got something more out of the 10th anniversary of Twilight than just a boring letter, and I'm glad I got to revisit the Twilight world if only through a slightly different lens. I'm going to go into a really quick spoiler section, so if you you haven't read Life and Death, Twilight, Reimagined, and you don't want to be spoiled, then you should leave in three, two, one. Okay, bye. Are you gone? Okay. All right. All right, so one change that I do want to talk about is Port Angeles. In Twilight, Bella nearly gets raped in Port Angeles, which is like really scary and realistic for women. And in Life and Death, Bo almost gets shot because some criminals think he's a cop or he's associated with cops. That was weird. That was really unbelievable and extremely contrived and it just really didn't work, I thought. And I don't wanna say that this change is indicative of Stephanie's opinion on male rape because I'm sure that she recognizes that it is an actual thing that happens. But I don't know, I don't know what I would have wanted her to do, but I just thought that whole scene was like, mm. Mm, not good. Now let's talk about the important change, the alternate ending. While I was reading this, I thought that the entire storyline of the rest of the Twilight series would have been so different had Bella been a boy, because obviously Bo can't give birth to a vampire-human hybrid, because that's not exactly how male anatomy works. Okay, so I saw a Goodreads status update via Twitter because I follow this person on Twitter, and they said, I'm only continuing to read this book because I heard that the ending was different. And I thought that was a spoiler. I didn't want to know that the ending was different because after hearing that, literally, I thought the only other ending that could have possibly happened would be for Bo to turn into a vampire in this book. It's like if in Twilight, Edward didn't suck out the venom in the ballet studio, like if Bella turned into a vampire in Twilight and not in Breaking Dawn. Like how else could have the ending changed? So I knew Bo was gonna be a vampire and it wasn't a surprise getting to that part, which is mm, infuriating, infuriating. But I thought the ending was interesting. It was definitely cool seeing how Twilight could have ended had Edward not been so adamant against Bella being a vampire. It was a little reminiscent of the Twilight edition of how it should have ended. If you guys watch that video series, it's funny, it's good. I don't think we necessarily needed that big info dump about the vampire world, because you're not gonna read this book without having read the Twilight Saga, so we as Twilight fans already know how the vampire world works. So to get that huge info dump at the end 
was mm, not so great. Also, I thought it bogged down the story. However, I do think that it's extremely interesting how the Volturi changed. Volturi? Volturi. Do you guys say Volturi or Volturi? Because in my head, I've always said Volturi, but I feel like that's not right. But anyway, the main trio is now predominantly female. In Stephanie's forward, she mentioned that she was like throwing a coup with some of her characters, and I was like, what does that even mean? And then I got to that part, and I was like, everything. So yeah, females are in a position of great authority in the vampire world, and they're significantly less corrupt, so that's really cool. I thought it was unrealistic how well Bo was able to resist blood as a newborn vampire. See, with Bella, it made more sense because she had a long time to mentally prepare herself, and also she had four books worth of like hardcore obsessive love for Edward. So it made sense that her love for Edward stood unparalleled against like bloodlust. Bo didn't have that kind of mental preparation. He knew like nothing about vampires, and also he only knew Edith for the length of one book. So how could his love for Edith have rivaled the power of bloodlust so quickly. It just didn't make sense to me. I don't know guys, I just highly, highly prefer Twilight over Life and Death. I didn't really have a fun time reading Life and Death. I read it because I love the saga and because I love Stephanie Meyer, but I don't know. I don't know. I really, really hoped that the announcement Stephanie Meyer was gonna make on Good Morning America was gonna be Midnight Sun. It was Life and Death. And you know, I'm not mad at Life and Death, but I'm still holding out hope for Midnight Sun. I think Edward's head is far more interesting than Beau's and slightly more interesting than Bella's, but maybe that's just because I've been in Bella's head so often. So yeah, I think that is all I have to say about Life and Death. Twilight Reimagined. Please let me know your thoughts on life and death in the comments. I would love to hear them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye!